Hello again, everyone. Today I am here to swatch a few Robert Oster inks. So these three Robert Oster inks I purchased from, oops, I purchased from Endless Pens recently, and they were on sale as part of their, so, so every week, well, most weeks, I guess I should say, Endless Pens, the website has uh, a hop drop deal if you're a member. Um, and to be a member, you just need to sign up with your email and that sort of thing. You don't have to pay. Um, but every Friday, they have a hop drop deal, and which is a list of different pens and, and other things that they have at a certain percentage off. It varies every time. But they had all of their green Robert Oster inks as part of the hop drop deal. So um, given that these are normally... So, somewhat pricey inks. I think they're normally, th these are just the regular line. They don't have shimmer or anything. They are normally around $17 a bottle. And then this, I think, was almost 30% off. So it was a pretty good deal. And uh, I, w I looked through all of the greens. They have so many beautiful greens, but I narrowed it down to three because I didn't want to get more than three bottles. So what I got is Velvet Storm, Sydney Darling Harbor, and Moss. So I'm going to swatch these for you today in this little traveler's notebook that I have set up for fountain pen ink swatches. As usual, I will put a link down below to the video where I went through this initial setup. And I will go ahead and go to a page I prepared for these. I'm just going to do it on the back of another page. I keep saying that I'm going to <laughs> that I'm going to stop buying inks and you know, just use the rest of these pages for individual ink studies or something like that. And then I keep buying inks. So maybe I just need to um, give up on, <laughs> on the idea of not buying more inks. It's just that there are always so many beautiful inks out there available. So the tools that I'm going to be using for this swatching is this automatic pen, which is a size 3A, and the link is in that setup video for this for this one. And then I also have this Moonman glass dip pen. It's just a little, sometimes a little easier for me to use this because I can just get it out and um, not be so precious with it as my regular glass dip pen. Uh, I'll put a link to this as well because this is not in the original setup video. And then off to the side, I have some water to rinse off my tools in between colors and a paper towel. So let's go ahead and get in here. I'm going to start, I'll actually start with Sydney Darling Harbor and then go to Moss and then Velvet Storm. And I have a couple of pens already loaded up with these two inks. So what I've been trying to do for other colors is to write with whatever pen I've loaded it up with at the time that I'm doing this um, so that I can have a, just another example of how the ink will look in a particular pen. It's not gonna give me the entire range of how an ink is going to look, but it gives me a, another example. So I'll bring those out once I'm done with the initial swatches and we'll go through that. There's also some fun stuff to talk about with those pens. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm not doing the samples on the col coloring sheets that I normally, uh, well, I don't normally, I sometimes do them on those as well, but just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna do it on this paper, which is Timoy River paper. And let's start with the Sydney Darling Harbor. So I generally agonize quite a bit over our colors of fountain pen ink. And I, uh, uh, Mountain of Ink is a great website run by someone who does uh, a lot of fountain pen ink testing. And they will show uh, different inks in different pens and go through a lot of different tests of ink. And it's a really great resource and really useful if you're trying to decide on inks. They don't have all on that uh, blog. There's not all of the inks in existence, obviously, but there there are a lot and uh, a lot of the major brands you might find there. So that's where I looked at these colors. There were a lot of the green colors that were available on that website. And uh, basically I just went through and decided on my three favorites or the three that would uh, suit pens that I have the best. Okay, sorry, I got a little bit of paper towel stuck in my automatic pen here, so let me put that off to the side. I was just cleaning that out, and then let's go with the glass dip pen. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit on this particular sample. 
This one in particular is a really beautiful shade of green. It's not like your typical green shade, which is nice. I kind of like things that aren't, um, that don't shout green necessarily. So this is Robert Oster. Sydney, Darling, I think Harbor is spelled that way. And rinse that off. And this one doesn't seem staining, or super staining anyway. Seems to come off the tools pretty much right away. And then I'm going to do the moss color. Make sure everything is in the frame so you can still see. And this is the other one that I've already put in a pen and it really is gorgeous. Um, some of these that some of these sort of, I don't know, funky green colors, I guess you could call them, that have a little bit of what I kind of call funk in them. <laughs> uh, some of them that, that are a little too yellow, I just don't like very much. I tried one from Diamine in their, um, it was an anniversary series ink, uh, Safari. That's one that's sort of like this, but I really don't like that one. It's, it's just a little bit too yellow for me. And this one is more my speed. It's more like, you know, moss. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Robert Oster, moss. Okay. And this one also doesn't seem to be super staining. It seems to be rinsing off pretty well. None of these are water resistant, so you would need to, you know, make sure you don't get water on them. And this last one, Velvet Storm, is supposed to be similar to uh, Lamy's Petrol ink, which is no longer available anywhere unless you buy it for super expensive on eBay, which I'm not willing to do. Uh, that was the description on Mountain of Ink. I'll put a link down below to Mountain of Ink. Great website. I use it all the time. Um, that, that was their comparison. I mean, it wasn't exactly the same color, but it's it was pretty similar. And I do have actually the Lamy Safari Petrol color. So I thought this might be nice to eventually put in there. Uh, right now, what do I have in there? I have um, Roar and Klingner. Um, Hmm. It's, it's a color similar to this. This is gorgeous. I mean, these three, it's very hard to pick inks with Robert Oster because they're all so gorgeous. There, there are very few that I have not liked. And, um, the only ones that I've had trouble with, not necessarily trouble, but like that don't, that have some issues basically are, uh, their, uh, shimmer inks. I, I do have some issues with those. Like they, they tend to have pretty large shimmer particles, which can clog up pens. And that's the issue I've had. So this is Robert Oster. Oh, what's the color again? Velvet Storm. Beautiful, beautiful color. And I think I've mentioned this before on the channel. These caps have a little ridge in them, sort of like a little inside ring. You might be able to see that there, uh, which basically prevents ink from getting onto the ring of the, of the bottle so that you can't, well, not that you can't, but it's less likely that you'll spill ink. So I, I think that's kind of nice. Okay, so there we are. Those are three absolutely gorgeous inks. And like I said, I already have these two in a pen, so I'm gonna show you that. All three of these have some really nice shading qualities. So basically you can get different tones of the ink depending. When you're, when you're looking at that though, you really need to look at the writing for you know how much shading there's gonna be in the writing. You probably almost always get more shading in broader nibs. And speaking of broader nibs, so I've shown this pen on the channel before. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can link up the original video where I talked about this. So this is a Pen Lux, uh, I believe this is called Rainforest or something like that. I'll try to find the link to the video where I, where I go through this in more deta detail. But the original setup for this pen, so it's rose gold on the metal finishes, but the n original nib was gold, just regular gold. 
And I didn't think that would bother me, but after a while it did. So <laughs> what I did was I got a Bach rose gold nib to put on here and now it matches and it makes me so happy. And one of the things that I also did with this Bach nib is when I ordered it, I ordered it with a specialty nib grind. So I ordered it from Pen Realm and here's the little card that came with it. And I have ordered several nibs from Pen Realm. Uh, the gentleman Kirk Spear who does the grinds is great. All of the, the nib grinds that I've gotten from him have been really great and interesting in their own right. So this, they, they carry both Bach and uh, Yovo nibs. So I, the Bach, I have several Bach rose gold nibs actually, and I really, really like them, especially in the broader nib sizes. So that's what I did knowing that even though this is originally a Yovo nib setup, that I would be able to swap them out. Normally I just swap out the nib itself. So these are friction fit in here. You can't unscrew this nib unit from this pen, but uh, you can pull this because it's just friction fit, put, replace the nib and then put it back in there. One thing that I noticed with this particular pen, this doesn't always happen when you're when you're swapping in and out Bach and Yovo nibs, just the nibs, not the uh, feed. So um, I was noticing a little bit of a gap between the feed and the nib. So what I did is I, I um, pulled the whole nib and feed from the original um, nib unit, which came in this little guy. So basically, here's your feed. This is actually the Yovo feed that I took out of here. And so it's deep in there, the nib sits there. It goes it sits deeper than this, but I don't wanna put it in there so that it gets stuck. And then you pull that out, you take out the nib, or you take out the nib and feed and put that in the new pen. And uh, fortunately, the Bach feed did fit into this setup. I can't guarantee that that's always gonna work for you, but um, I'm pretty comfortable with swapping out nibs and um, you know changing things up with these because I've done a lot of them. So uh, so I'm okay with that. And if, if something goes wrong, I'm, I'm not too worried that I can't uh, fix the problem. <laughs> so like if it gets stuck or, you know, something, I, I know how to deal with that. So it's not really that big of a problem. But if you're a newbie at it, you know, you might want to start with just replacing Yovo nibs with Yovo nibs, <laughs> if that if that helps. Okay, so this pen has Robert Oster Moss in it. And this is a broad Bach rose gold nib, which is beautiful in its cursive smooth italic, basically a CSI. So if you see that, that's what it is. And this is Penlux. I'm just gonna call it the Penlux green. And I try to do cursive and block lettering with a Bach gold. Um, CSI. Rose gold. Nib. So that's lovely. I'm going to put this closer up to the camera before I go. I don't, like I said, I don't have Velvet Storm in another pen yet, so I can't do a writing sample for that one. But this one has the uh, Sydney Darling Harbor ink in it. And this is a Woodshed Pen Company Burgundy. And um, his pens go on sale from time to time, but sometimes uh, they're all out of stock or, or you know, they're, they're not readily available. I would suggest following Woodshed Pen Company on Instagram so that you can find out when pens become available. But uh, what I did was I put the Penlux uh, nib in here because it is actually a really great nib. I just was, the aesthetics of the gold nib up against the rose gold hardware was just, it just wasn't pleasing to me to look at. So I swapped them out. Um, and this does take a Yovo nib unit, but because I just removed the nib from this one, I, I did the friction fit pull dealio and uh, put this nib in there with the same feed uh, that this had in there before. And then I just took out the nib that was in here and I've put it in my little collection of nibs because that was just a regular Yovo nib. So here we are with this one and this one is 
which shed pen company burgundy with a Penlux medium nib. Even though it's branded Penlux, it is a, a Yovo nib. So um, there you go. So I think that's it. These are four, these are four. <laughs> it's been a long work day. These are three beautiful green inks. As you can see, there's a lot of character to all of these. I really like how you can get some sort of light shades and dark shades with the Sydney Darling Harbor. It's almost like a teal, I would say. And then this moss color is just really beautiful and dynamic. And you can see how it looks in writing there. And then this velvet storm is really beautiful and dark. So none of these are typical greens, but these are the kind of greens that I really, really gravitate to, towards. When I see something that's just like green, I, I just don't find that very interesting. But, you know, I, I reserve the right to change my mind because I do a lot with color, especially because there's so many great colors out there. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to like and or subscribe to my channel to keep track of future videos. And I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.